Hey everyone, it's my birthday today, and seeing as it's the end of Zelda month, I thought it'd be a great time to talk about a game that's very close to my heart, and probably to a lot of yours out there too, The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. The game I bought when I was about 8 years old, I believe, with my birthday money, which kind of kindled my interest in RPGs, and to this day is one of my favourite games of all time. There aren't many games as popular, well respected, or fondly remembered as Ocarina of Time. Anyone my age who is even slightly into gaming has probably tried this N64 RPG, and for me, this was my first experience playing a Zelda game. Back in 1998, I stumbled into the local Woolworths store with my mum and started to peruse the games on the shelves. The week after the release of the game was my 8th birthday, and I had just enough money to buy one new game, and there were many to choose from, but one in particular stood out. I remember seeing it on the shelf, a black box with a gold crest of a sword and shield imposed on the front with five large letters etched into the design. Zelda. So of course my initial reaction as an 8 year old was... What's a Zelda? Now for the next few weeks The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time consumed my life and I think because of my age playing this game I really projected onto Link as a character. You know, I'm about the same age as Link at the time, and he's a young orphaned kid raised in a magic forest with a tree as his father figure? Yeah, right. Makes sense. But anyways, Ocarina of Time is your standard RPG fanfare with a pretty basic plot. You, a small child with a destiny to become a hero, must travel the land killing foul monsters, obtaining shiny trinkets, weapons and equipment to kill the big bad villain and save the land from evil. As young Link, we start our journey being woken up by our soon-to-be companion Navi, who tells us the great Deku Tree needs to have a word of us, among other helpful bits of advice. <laughs> to get to him, we need to buy ourselves a wooden shield and find the hidden treasure of the forest people, the Kokiri Sword. Sorry guys, um, how does that work? Is that an enchanted boulder? Look at them right turns, boy! So the Deku Tree tells us he's feeling a bit ill, and so we explore his body to find the source of the problem. As first dungeons go, we get to learn a lot about the game and its mechanics. We try a bit of combat, interact with some NPCs, find secrets, platform, puzzle solve, and even get to kill our first boss creature. Then as we pick up the game's first heart container and leave the dungeon for a portal, the Deku Tree tells us about the history of Hyrule, the land the game is set in. Apparently, three goddesses, Din, Faror, and Naru, created the earth, planets, oceans, animals, people, the whole shebang, and left behind three golden triangles representing their powers, which are able to grant the wish of the person who finds it because... reasons. So naturally, each of the three represents a goddess, Din, the goddess of power, Naru, the goddess of wisdom, and Faror, the goddess of courage. The one who uses the Triforce can be granted any wish they desire and have unmatched might if all three aspects of the Triforce are in balance. And one man in particular is really keen to get his hands on it, the King of Thieves, Ganondorf. Oh and then the Deku Tree dies. So in order to stop Ganon from stealing the Triforce from the Sacred Realm which is accessible through the Temple of Time, we must acquire three spiritual stones from the first three dungeons of the game to seal the Triforce away from his evil clutches. Plus to get to the Triforce you need to know the Song of Time taught only to Hyrule Royalty, using the Ocarina of Time itself to gain entry to the inner chamber of the temple. However, in the end Ganon just waits for us to open the door of time and takes the Triforce anyways. Balls. Plus, when Ganon does take the Triforce, it shatters into three bits with Ganondorf retaining the Triforce of Power, Zelda inheriting the Triforce of Wisdom, and Link getting Courage. Yet with just one piece of the Triforce, Ganon manages to completely ruin the Kingdom of Hyrule, and instate himself as its king for seven long years of cruelty, suffering, and evil. Though to be honest, if there ever was anyone who earned anything, it's Ganondorf. I mean, he didn't even really do much in this instance, and he still got everything he wanted. Clever chap. It's at this point the game's main defining mechanic comes into play. Time travel. So when you resume the game, you get to control adult Link. He's stronger, has the capability of using more powerful weaponry, and is a fairer match against Ganon. However, several items in the game are linked to each version of Link. Want to use the hookshot? Well, Young Link's too weak, so he can't handle it. 
Want to use magic beans to access secret areas of the game? Well, you need to plant them when you're young so they have time to grow. Want to use the tunic that lets you breathe underwater? Well, it's too big for young Link, so you'll need to go back to the future. Now I need your help to get back to the year 1985. Gotta get back in time. Having spent the time as young Link, I really fit into the flow of the gameplay. I could relate to being able to use slingshots and sticks as weapons because, well, I was a kid. But then to progress to using a bow, a massive hammer, and a great sword? Those are the things you want to do when you're a kid, and you get to. Because this is a video game. It's how it works. Plus, with Ganon mixing things up with his reign of terror, recurring characters change. Situations develop. And new conflicts arise that you become more invested in, with some even requiring manipulation of the time mechanic to progress. And it may have been pretty fun as young Link fighting Stalchild, Skull Toolers, Deku Scrub, and an occasional Lizalfoss, but now the stakes are higher, you'll be battling bigger and tougher enemies. Environments become more hazardous, the need for more hearts becomes greater, and your adventure scales beautifully with its pacing. Plus, if you need a break from the dungeons and boss fights, there are item upgrades to find, minigames to play, errands to run, and places to explore. In a lot of ways, even though this game is very linear in its design, for the most part it's up to you how you spend your time, and with the ability to ride our trusty steed Epona over the expanses of Hyrule Field as Adult Link, the world truly feels like a grand adventure. I mean, even while I was replaying the game for this video, I kept rediscovering things I loved about the side missions and side objectives and mini-games that really fleshed out the world. Even the fishing. Now, as we start Adults Link's continuation of the adventure, we are contacted by an old sage known as Raru, who's also this giant owl. Somehow. And he tells us that Ganondorf can be stopped if Link assembles five other sages to aid in the battle for Hyrule. Each resides in a temple of one of the elements, forest, fire, water, shadow, and spirit. Most are old friends from our adventures as young Link, and each dungeon yields a unique weapon or useful item which is used to manage the dungeon's platforming and bosses. Some dungeons stray from this formula a little bit, and a lot of people have issue with this design concept, but I don't mind it. I'm a simple man, what can I say? Then, when we rescue each sage and finish up all we want to do with our extracurricular activities, we can face Ganon. The sages create a bridge to his castle, and inside we have to face a trial from each of the elements. Completing each one weakens the barrier to Ganon's chamber until we can ascend the stairs and face the man himself. Side note, he's also an accomplished organist. The battle with this so-and-so is pretty neat. We play a few rounds of tennis, exchange particle effects, and eventually strike him down. Next, Link and Zelda escape the castle as it crumbles and deteriorates around them until the whole thing comes crashing down in spectacular, Jenga-esque fashion. But... he's not dead yet. Seriously though, is there anything Ganon can't do? I mean, what's on his CV at the moment? Only man born of his people in a thousand years? Check. Magician? Check. Necromancer, ruler, horse rider, organist, endurance athlete, and shapeshifter? Anyway, right off the bat, Link gets disarmed and we have to fight Ganon with any weapon other than the Master Sword. Which isn't really a problem if, like me, you ditch that piece of rubbish as soon as you got this beast. <laughs> Now we have to strike Ganon's tail until the flames around the arena recede. Zelda beckons us to grab the Master Sword. Oh, and also, thanks for the help, you know. You could have actually done something. I mean, what, you have a Triforce, right? Considering it's the Triforce of Wisdom, I ain't seen much clever thinking from you. And then we continue our round of Man vs Pig. Then when Ganon falls, Zelda restrains him with her magic. Finally! Legend of Zelda? More like Legend of Useless and Link delivers the final blow, killing Ganon.
Wait, hang on, he's still alive. Honestly, at this rate, this game should be called Legend of Ganondorf. He's really outshone everyone else. And there we go. With Ganon defeated, the world goes back to being full of light, merry antics and lush scenery. Plus, Navi goes away. Hooray! And as the sages rest, Link is returned to his child form and is able to live his youth for the next seven years. But wait a minute, hang on. Here, Ruto the Zora Princess is an adult, right? But Link and Zelda are kids. And the final battle was in the adult timeline. So does that mean this ends on a time paradox? The castle's been rebuilt, so it must be the past timeline, right? But then, full-grown Epona is prancing around Hyrule Field? And Malon's grown up? Uh... So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Without a doubt, this is one of my favourite games, possibly top five, and definitely my favourite RPG ever made. There's just something magical about it. And even though I've already played this game a million times, replaying it this time just reinforced how well crafted this game is. All the dungeons, NPCs, weapons, items, puzzles, the environment, the story, everything just melds together in this fantastic adventure that to some has never been matched and to me, I gotta say I agree. And considering this game is almost 20 years old, it's crazy how much replayability there is to it. I mean. I've played this game god knows how many times, but I keep coming back to it and still enjoying the experience over and over again without any sign of my love for this franchise and this game in particular faltering. But either way, that was my birthday special of the Grizzly Gems. It's been a fun year doing these videos and I thought I'd kick off this particular one with one that's very special to me. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, hope you enjoyed whatever else has been going on in Zelda month, and I will see you guys later. Hello!